Well, you may have heard of uh, the ribeyes, New York's, fillets. Those are staples in the home. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive deeper. We're gonna show you these intricate cuts that a lot of butchers have to take more time to get. I promise you, you're gonna enjoy them. Oh my gosh, folks, we are in the land of the wonderful and beautiful creation south of Ten Sleep, Wyoming on a ranch, the Lazy Tea Ranch. I thank Caden for joining us. And hey, if y'all have missed some of these videos on our series about Wyoming, be sure and check out our Wyoming playlist because we are here to talk about beef. <laughs> This is an amazing, unique cut. There's only two on the animal, so they get extremely hard to find and as well to cut out, but it sits right in that hip pocket. And people will ask, why do you call it an oyster steak? Well, if you ever look at an oyster in a half shell, it's got that resemblance to it, but I've also heard it called like the spider steak because it does have these little webs that come back through it. Even though it sits in that hip bone, yeah. you actually get an immense amount of flavor in that marbling. It's immense. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> and it's immense. It's immense. I promise it's good. I really like to just put them on a, on a smoker that's running 250 with a little cherry wood uh, just to let it smoke maybe five to eight minutes and then pull that thing out of there. Get us a skillet that's really good and hot with some butter and garlic and then sear that thing and splash that back up there. And we'll make a dipping sauce that goes with this. I call the wonder sauce. The, the furthest that I would ever go on this would be maybe to the light end of medium rare. The longer you cook this, the more damage you're doing to it because you're gonna make this just a tougher piece of meat as you go along. really want to have this oyster steak or any steak that we cook today with the wonder sauce. Is it wonderful? Oh, it's wonderful and it's a wonder to make, but really all it is is chipotle peppers and a little brown sugar, you know, liquid smoke, onion powder, garlic powder. Blend it with a little mayonnaise or sour cream if you would like. I'm just gonna cut it. Does it matter how you cut it? No, there's your half and my half as no, well. I like it. Bone appetite. Cheers. Mm. Mm. I think it's that sauce, but you think it's that beef. I think it's that beef. <laughs> you know, it, the texture is spot on. Yep. It's tender. It's everything you're wanting in a steak. And I promise it'll be good to the last bite. I'm, a, I'm liking this one, brother. This is rare. One per animal, yes. as you know. It's called a hanging tender. Another name for it. Hanger steak, because what's it doing? It's only hanging, hanging out. out. And it's only got one purpose and that is to control the diaphragm in the animal. Yeah. So there's only one, so back in the day, the butchers used to cut these out and take them for themselves because they are packed oh, with flavor. They are. It's got a real beef flavor to it. So you see now the grain of the meat is running this way. Now, after I'd cook this, I would take this and just slice it right in half first, and then I'd cut against this grain all the way up. How are we gonna cook this to keep the flavor and the tenderness in it? This really doesn't need any anything done to it besides seasoning and cooking. I'm gonna give this just a little dab of lime juice on there and not much. And then I'm gonna season it with our original, probably both sides, let it come to room temperature. I always like to do that for you. That way you're gonna get an even cook time when you do this. And I'm gonna put it on a grill and I am gonna cook it till it is about 120 and then I'm gonna eat it. I'll probably call you, but I'm gonna eat it, <laughs> know what I mean? Where, where are we gonna find this steak? If there's just one in an animal. Kent, that's the easiest question you've asked all day. <laughs> Lazy Tea Ranch, we've got them. But at the same time, you can find them. You gotta go to your local butcher and you gotta make sure he hasn't taken them home first. Yeah. Ask him if he's got some held in the back and they'll have them. Make sure they're trimmed properly and it'll be some of the best eating you've had. All right, Kent, these last two, they take a little bit of work, but the flavor is still there. The first one we got here, Chuck Tell Flap right at the tail end of that chuck. Doesn't move much, it's got a lot of flavor, but these can be difficult. But you only get out what you put in. That is true, and, and there's a lot of, lot of fiber in this meat when you look at it. You think, oh my gosh, look at all that that's in there. Cut like this, you really gotta break down and marinate. Something that's gonna let it set. I recommend at least six, 
but we went ahead and did about 12 hours with this, and it's just a mixture of that W sauce, of some red wine, but also some balsamic vinegar, some lime juice, and you get some rosemary and thyme in there, and let all them flavors just encase that in a Ziploc bag. But also bring this out, let it come to room temperature before we cook it, and we're gonna throw it on the grill, and we're gonna grill it till it's about 115, 110, and then we're gonna take it off, let it rest a minute, we're gonna eat it, and you ain't gonna have to chew it, it's gonna melt in your mouth. Hot fire, don't take long. I love this sound that's fixing to happen. That sound right there. It is called the sizzle effect. I mean, it'll make everybody hungry. People say, oh, you can't turn that steak. You, know, you can't. I have turned steak so many times that they get dizzy for me checking them because when I'm cooking really on an open fire, there's no set temperature. Most of the time I try to keep a really hot zone and then one that's not quite as hot. And I like to do, anytime you have a thicker piece of meat like this, Go ahead and cook all sides, even if you've got to hold it with them tongs. Sacrifice that hand, Caden, burn the hair off of it. So when you first take it out, it may be a little bit tough, but don't get discouraged. You marinate it just like Kent did, and you're gonna turn out with something just like this. When you get that smoke flavor, and really when I'm doing beef, if I'm gonna add smoke to it, I really love to use some cherry, some oak. Uh, you know, mesquite can be a little overpowering, uh, pecan, something like that. This particular has two little rolls of fat right here yeah. on the side. So before I would present this to anyone, I would just take this knife and go ahead and get rid of that piece. And let's just see if there's any juice in here. Was he? Ooh, I don't know. Yeah. You know, you almost get some, you almost get some resemblance of tri-tip. Yes, it, it's got, because to me the flavor is, is very similar to tri-tip off this. So I'm gonna have this bite and you're gonna have that one. You gotta get the juices. Oh, it's got plenty in there. <laughs> so tender from what we started out with. Now I got to see this cause I know you got it in you. You got to do break down and dance because that's what my people love is the dancing move that you got. You call it the 10 sleep shuffle? Yes, can you do it? There we go! Yes, sir, brother, you got it! I feel like a seizure a little bit. <laughs> this is one of the most tender cuts and flavorful cuts that you'll ever see. What part of the animal are we talking about here, Caden? So we're sitting right back in the chuck roll. They gotta break that apart, and once that's broken apart, they can cut this triangular type cut off called the Sierra steak. You get immense tenderness. There's my word again. <laughs> I like that what is, what is immense, and when have I ever said immense in my life? And I've seen this done two, three different ways. You know, where it's a really uh, flash sear in a skillet, you know, and I've seen people finish it off with red wine reduction. Uh, but I have seen people that'll go ahead and marinate this for like a short 30, 45 minute deal just to break down some of that muscle fiber in there. There's two things that I always point to on the Sierra steak. One, it sits in that chuck roll. Yeah. So it's not a, it's a part that doesn't move as much in the animal, but you get the flavor of that chuck roll. Chuck roasts are amazing, ribeyes are close to their strip loin. So yeah. anything that's close to there, you're gonna get really good flavor from. We made it, we're at number five. Ooh. Number five, the ranch steak. Another tough cut, but properly marinated and handled well, I think it'll turn out great. Let me tell you just a little bit about right. this cut. This comes right from the shoulder, so it is a moving muscle. That's where it's gonna get a little bit of that toughness from. But the ranch steak, can be one of the most flavorful cuts if prepared correct. I would always trim just a tad of this. Take it off here just a little because I want that to render down a little quicker than it's going to. Just like we did that chuck flap, you know, we're gonna give it a smoke bath with a little cherry wood. But instead of finish this on the grill or the smoker, we're gonna sear this in a hot cast iron skillet to really give us that great flavor because I'm looking forward to this. I really love these kind of steaks because they do pack a lot of flavor in there. A couple things that'll help with it is that 21 day dry age. Yeah. That's gonna help start to break down some of those enzymes yeah. in that protein. And, and all y'all's beef is 21 days That's dry correct. aged. You know, and that makes a big difference because when you go to a store and you buy something, it might have sat in there seven days, might have sat in there three days, That's you right. know. We're just gonna get about 10 minutes of smoke. 
you know, uh, I've loaded it up pretty heavy. We'll choke it down to where we can really get that enhanced flavor pretty quick on there from that cherry wood. But it's gonna help give us a little better flavor. We'll lock her down tight. Then we'll break out the cast iron skillet and things will go to town. Put this over there and just let it smoke for 45 minutes you know and, and and sort of get this a little more tender because this is a little heavier cut than what we had it's going to uh, take a little longer to cook but also you could smoke this same thing and then just take it hey i'm gonna throw this in the crock pot put me some taters carrots onions in there and just let it cook i think we got to give it a shot yes mm. mage that was a good one make sure mage gets his come around here buddy come on come on Good boy. Thanks for helping. Caden, thank you so much, brother, for letting me do this with you to get to explore really five unique beef cuts. You know, there's so much more to the animal and that's what we're trying to do yeah. at Lazy Tea Ranch is we're trying to inform people there's more than burger, ribeyes, New Yorks and fillets. Be sure to check them out. Go to your grocery store, try these new flavors, try these new cuts yeah. because there's so much more, isn't there? You know, Caden, one thing we didn't cover and that was cost. Can you break that down for me just I a sure little? Can. Yeah, and I think that's where we're a little bit different. Everything is on the same level. We price everything the exact same. So no matter if you're getting an oyster steak, if you're getting one of those illustrious ribeyes, we're gonna have it in the same sort of box format. So you're getting the same quality beef for the same price across the board. But it is with great pride, honor, and privilege that I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying over camp no matter where it may be. We appreciate you one and all. Rest of you, come on up in here close. Caden, you gotta get this motion around here like this. We're gonna get in real close, gonna give you a great big hug. God bless you each and every one and we'll see you down the Lazy Tea Beef Trail. You know, the proper way to make sure that, I don't know where I'm going with that, so why don't you go ahead hey, and I think you were doing really good. Rolling with you were just we're gonna go just roll. With it, you can lay your hands on one, you won't be sorry, but you can find one where? You can find it at Lazy Tea Ranch, and maybe, nope, that's it. <laughs> <laughs>